guys and welcome back to another coding video and I got a great one for you guys today. So we're going to be building a timer web app. Um, as you see here it looks very beautiful, nice and modern. Um, each button has this cool animation when you hover over it. You know everything is nice and color coded and uh, you know to match up the same. And here we go if we click start and you know it obviously runs and you can add and subtract time as you're running it. Um, you can end it, completely reset everything, add some more time maybe before you want to start it, subtract it, and then start it. You know, whatever you want. It's super simple, like UI, very modern and very fast. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to build this today, and let's get right into it. Okay, guys, so here I am in the uh, file manager of my cPanel, and uh, you're only going to need four files. So timer.php, and it doesn't have to be .php because I actually don't end up using any PHP throughout this, which is really surprising. But um, you can obviously make it whatever file extension you want, you know, .html, .aspx, whatever you want to do that is completely fine. I just did it uh, PHP to match up with what I have for the other sites. Now, something else to note, um, you're going to need this winter.png, and I'll link down the, I'll link down in the description below how to download that. Um, let me just preface this that the uh, clock logo is not mine. The uh, background picture is not mine, of course. I'm giving credit to those artists in the description below. And there are some other things I'm going to link in the description to give credit to where credit is due. So let's get right into it. Let's first go ahead and open up timer.php. And here we are. We have a nice blank file. So let's initialize some stuff like our HTML and our header. And then we're not going to put anything there quite yet. Um, and then we're going to need body. So here we are, super simple so far, obviously. Um, and let's just start off by creating um, our center tag. Because we want, you know, this, this white form is going to be in the center of the page, of course. And then let's first start by doing a division and call it um, filler. And the reason I call it this is because it, that's literally what it does. So you'll notice how um, the form from the page was, you know, kind of centered vertically in the screen. And that's kind of hard to do because so uh, horizontally you can center it with the center tag. But if you if you want to do it, um, you know, vertically, you actually have to kind of play around with it. And, and the way that I know how to do it is I usually make this uh, this subclass solely just for creating that space. So what we're going to do is do that, and let's go ahead and link our style sheet. So if we go up into the header and type in link, and the relation is going to be style sheet so that it knows what it is. And then we have to name the href, which will uh, tell us where to find it. And since it's in the same directory on the server, um, we just have to name the name of the file, which is great. So we now have that linked. So let's go over to style sheet and design this. And before you go there, make sure to copy the class name because with custom names, you obviously have to specify it exactly. So here we are over in our style sheet and you do dot and then the class name, some brackets, oh, the wrong ones. Okay, some brackets. And all we're gonna do for this is just go ahead and kind of create some space. So what I like to do is height, and then 15%. And one thing to note, and it's important throughout this entire process, is that you kind of want to stay away from naming pixels. So, like, I could have said, oh, I want to use, you know, 150 pixels as my space. But the important thing about that is that when you change sizes of the display, um, that won't line up. So, even if it looks good on this display, it might not look good, you know, if someone's on their phone or on a different size monitor, whatever it is. So we're just gonna do height is 15%, and then width is 100%, because we want it to take up the entire width of the page. So let's click Save. And so far we have don't have a lot here. So let's um, go ahead and then design our next class, which we're gonna call uh, main form. And this is going to be the class that controls that big white uh, you know, rounded edges um, form in the middle of the screen that you see all this, the, the functions and, and buttons on. So here we are inside our main form. And first, let's go ahead and link up that uh, image. So 
let's do image and then the source of the image is going to be the name of the image which is clock pick dot png and after we name the file we go ahead and type in width and there's no sense in doing that in the style sheet because um, you know it's just one image so there's no that's just a lot of extra work so you do width and then 60 percent and semicolon and then you go over and type in height and that's going to be 40 percent now I know this is a little bit weird syntactically than normal for like styling inside the element but um, I don't know it kind of just works so let's just stick with it so then we're gonna add a break line right underneath that to give it a tiny bit of space then we actually have to design our main form so let's go ahead take this go into the style sheet and right underneath filler let's go ahead and design main form so let's do dot main form and open those up so for this uh, we're just going to do a couple of things so border radius is going to be 30 30 pixels um, background color is going to be white the width will be 30% of the page and then the height will be um, let's do 70% because remember we did 15% up on this filler on top so then it'll be 15 70 and then it'll leave just enough another 15 right underneath this uh, so that it's perfectly centered vertically so we have that filled out and actually one more thing let's go ahead and and name a font you guys can name whatever font you want but the one I'm using here is a nice looking one it's it's PT sans and then comma and it's part of the sans serif family so let's go ahead uh, and do that and one more thing let's just design our body in here so if it's not a custom class one thing to know if it's not a custom class like if it's something common you know like HTML or body or h1 you know like header or image you don't have to put the dot in front of that and that's something I actually had to like kind of pick up after a while because I noticed there's a lot of errors and I couldn't figure out why and, and that's that's why so just in case you guys didn't know that but anyways uh, let's just copy this same font here up here so first thing here we're gonna name our background image and that is going to be that like nice lake with the, the snow and the mountains so you can actually name a image for the or background image for your whole page in CSS, and it's really nice. So you just go in the body here, and then you you specify the URL that you want to find it at, and you could link it to you know some Google image somewhere. But um, it's also super easy to just name the uh, name of the image if it's in the same directory, which we have it as you'll see over here. Um, Winter.png is right here, so I just want to name that and we we call that right there and that will actually set it as the page so let's go ahead and save here and just kind of kind of check out where we are here as far as the design goes okay so here we are we as you see so far with just that little bit of work we designed our spacing above and below we designed the form and we rounded the corners we added this image here and we added the background so it actually looks you know like you're kind of almost done but there's a ton of little tiny things that we still have to do so first let's go back to the um, timer file and let's go ahead and and do break line here so the first thing that I'm gonna do is, is we're gonna use this for later so span ID and you can call it this call it countdown because this is going to represent our countdown timer and um, I like to initialize it at 60 because 60 cents, seconds in a minute, and it's just kind of nice to do it that way. Um, and then you're going to need another span in case that it's plural. So span ID equals uh, plural. And we're going to do an S here. So this S will only come in um, once it's plural. And obviously it won't just do it by itself we're gonna have to have some JavaScript down here to tell it to do that but we're gonna get to that later all right next so we're going to do um, three break lines here so let's just do three of them like I said and then right underneath that 
we're going to do a div. So this div is going to represent um, one of the two blocks that we're going to use. So div class equals block. And then we're going to we're going to dis, uh, just style it in here. So we're going to do a little bit here and a little bit on the style sheet. But first do display and then type in inline dash block. And then the width is going to be 20%. Okay, so we have our first div here. And so what's super easy to do is just take this and go ahead and copy it again, because we're going to need it again right below that. Um, and then inside of here, we're going to name four buttons. So as you saw at the beginning of the video, we're going to need four of them. And the first one is going to be the start button. So button ID, start button. And the name should also be start button in case we want to reference it later in HTML. And then the class is going to be fill. Whoops. Fill. And then on click, we're going to call a function later that I will go ahead and call it now. We're going to call it start timer. And then here we have the text that the user is going to see. So in all caps, type in start. And then to give some nice spacing in between the buttons, you're going to just add two break lines here. So one break line to return to the next line so that um, you know you don't have two buttons on the same line. Then another break line to add one line of spacing. So then something that's real easy to do is just copy this and go ahead and put it down a couple times here. So we're going to need it four times in total. Let's fix, this, fix the spacing here. So then let's just switch up the stuff. So first, um, let's change the titles of all these. So this is going to be the plus five button. And this third to last button is going to be the end button. And then the other one here is going to be minus five. And you're going to kind of wonder, like, wait a minute, if I see them grouped at the beginning of the video, how come they're kind of split up here? And I'll explain that once we load the view. But first, let's swap around some stuff. So for this plus five, we're going to call a function called add time. It's still going to be class of fill, so it has the same design. But this instead is going to be called add five. So let's just take that and copy that here. So now we're done with this first division. So let's go to the second one. OK, so in the second one, we're going to call this um, end button. And let's just copy this and paste that here. It's still going to be class fill. And then for this, we're going to call end timer as our function. And then the last button here is the minus uh, button here. So let's just call it minus button. Of course, class is the same. And then the uh, thing that it's actually going to run is called minus time. And we will declare all those later, but we're just setting up the framework now to get ready for that. All right, so next thing here is if we go ahead and load the page, make sure both things are saved here. But if we go ahead and load the page, you'll notice that these buttons are already uh, looking pretty. But that is only because I have this page cache. So if I empty the cache and do a hard reload, you'll see that, you know, the background's kind of wonky. You know, the buttons are ugly. This is this text here is tiny. And, you know, let's just go ahead and fix some stuff. So let's go back here into the style sheet. And we're going to have to name a couple classes. So the first class that we're going to name is span. Remember, you don't need a dot for that because that's a common function. So this one, we're just going to copy this font family to make sure it's the same font. And then um, the font size is going to be 125 pixels. And the reason you can name pixels here and here is because you're just telling the um, style sheet, you know, you want size of font of 125 pixels. And that's going to be relatively the same whatever device you're going to be. That's not a big change as if, like, you know, you had 300 pixels here. That's going to look different on someone's smartphone. So let's uh, let's do that. And I, I apologize ahead of time. If you see me putting this font family in here and you're cringing, 
I'm sorry, I don't, I don't have a ton of experience with style sheets, so I just kind of like to have that in each little section for redundancy, just in case that the font is not matte or mirrored throughout. Next, we're going to do button, and this one um, is just a standard class, so we don't need a dot, but we're going to have a lot of stuff in here. So first, the position is going to be relative, and then following that, we're going to do the height, it's going to be 60 pixels, and for buttons, that's not a big deal. Um, we can do pixels here. So the width is going to be 85%. And you might think, oh, well, why, isn't that going to take up the whole page? But no, because these buttons are inside of the uh, other class, these divisions here, um, it will only take up 85% of the width of that division, which we will call later. So once again, let's go ahead and copy this in here. Um, just for safety reasons. And uh, then uh, we're going to need font uh, weight. That's going to be 700. And then font size is 15 pixels. Letter spacing is 2 pixels. I forgot the colon here. And then what else do we need? Color. So the color is going to be unique. Um, I'm just going to match it to what I have for the other like pictures and kind of the background. So you can use whatever color you want, but I'm going to just use this one, which is this weird hex uh, thing that you got to call. So then we're going to need a border. We're going to call the color again, and then say that it's solid. And then the border radius is going to be uh, 30 pixels, so it's very rounded. Um, the outline is going to be zero. The background is going to be none. The Z index is going to be one. And if you're wondering what that is, uh, Z index is just a way that you can tell it uh, what layer it's on because some things you might want to hide behind other things like maybe i want to hide an image behind you know a button or something so z index is one the higher the number the farther up in the layers it is so it'll be more front facing towards the user then we need cursor and that's going to be pointer um, and then we need these nice transitions that gives it that cool animation so then first we're going to do point 0 0.8 s and then the animation is going to be ease in and then we just kind of going to copy that all the way down so we have this transition here and these dash ms transition and then the Maz transition and the web kit dash transition. So then we're just going to take this right here, copy it, and put it in each one of these fields. So we have those, and that's nice. But then we need some more CSS. So I'm going to do dot fill because that's the custom name of a class and hover. So when the user hovers over this, we just want to make the color something called white smoke. And that's going to make it look real nice. So then we also need fill or sorry, dot fill before. So this is what the button's going to look like before the uh, animation. And then we're going to have something else. You can add another field for after if you want, but we don't actually need that. So in here, we're just going to say content is nothing. The position is absolute. The background is that same color from earlier, which is this. And the bottom is 0, left 0, right zero, top 
the z index is negative one and the dash webkit dash transition to top 0 0.09 seconds and ease dash in. So let me just, oh, actually we need one more thing. So we need one more field down here and it's dot fill um, colon hover colon before in the brackets. And then the top here is gonna be zero. So let me just preface something. Um, these button designs are not mine either. And that's okay. You know, a lot, you know, that's what these resources are for, like code pen, stack overflow. Um, you know, we're allowed to share these designs with one another. And someone was nice enough to design these really good looking buttons. And I just took them, changed the colors a little bit, but I will still give the person credit down below in the description. So please go ahead and, you know, click on that link and go see their page. They make a lot of nice stuff. But for now, now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and go back to the other page. All right, here we are, and uh, we're actually pretty much done. One more thing we need to do is link another style sheet, and we're just gonna have to link the font because this is an imported uh, Google font. And I could show you guys another video if you want um, on how to you know, link fonts from Google, but for now, we're just going to uh, reference that so that we can import it and it's a long link but let me just type it out here and the relation is going to be style sheet and let me just copy this just to make sure that I got the link right because I do happen to have it written down over here uh, let me just do this and that and another colon so now we know that the link is right for sure let's erase this space here click save click save over here okay let's give this a refresh and you'll notice nothing changed You're like wait a bit we just did all that cool stuff and nothing happened well that's because your browser has cached the page so let's go ahead and um, just do this and empty cache and reload you'll see it looks very nice with the nice rounded corners the background goes all the way to the edge and there's a cool animation on all these buttons but obviously None of them work or do anything really. So let's go ahead and go into the back end and make these buttons work. So let's go down here and then call our script because we're obviously using JavaScript. So let's just give us some room here. So the first thing we're gonna need is a variable called seconds. And this is just going to be equal to the document dot uh, get element by ID. And it's going to be countdown and dot uh, text content. So this is just going to go ahead and set seconds to whatever we have set here, which is 60. Um, like I said before, you can set it to whatever you want. I just have 60 because I think that's a nice number. Um, then we're gonna call var countdown and just initialize it at nothing. And then go down here and uh, we're gonna need a couple functions. So function add time. And remember we already named these earlier, so just match it exactly how you name them. Uh, function minus time. Function start timer. And function end timer. Okay, so we have our four functions. And we shouldn't need any more space than this. So first, let's go ahead and get the add and minus out of the way. So this is going to be simple. We're going to take the current seconds, equal it to itself, and then just add five seconds. And then the other thing we need to do is go ahead and update the um, the current countdown clock. So let's go ahead and do this. Copy that. So let's go ahead and do this. Copy that and paste it down here and change this to inner HTML. Um, I don't really know the difference entirely, but uh, I, I figured out that when I was debugging, sometimes these come up and it's kind of a weird situation, but um, just go ahead and, and keep these different inner HTML because I know that this is the one that works. Um, I could be wrong though, but let's just keep that like that for now. So let's go to the other one and honestly, just copy the exact same thing. And all you have to do is change this plus to a minus. 
So here we are. We have those two functions out of the way. So let's go ahead and, and actually control the clock. So when they start the timer, the first thing that we need to do is say the countdown. And we're going to set that equal to this thing called set interval. And this is a default JavaScript function. Um, the first thing, it's like a two parameter function. So the first one is you're, you're telling it what function you want to run, right? And the function that we want to run is actually what we're going to create right here. So uh, do open brackets and give yourself a little bit of room. And then something simple to do right at the beginning is go on the inside of the parentheses, but after the bracket, do a comma and type in 1000 and then a semicolon. So what this is saying is countdown is going to be equal to sent interval. It's running this function, which we're creating right here. And the interval is a thousand milliseconds, which is equal to one second. So once you click this start timer, it's actually going to just run this. And every thousand milliseconds, it's going to run whatever's in here over and over again until it hits zero, which we will have to tell it what to do when that happens. So first, let's do seconds and minus minus, because every time that this ticks, we want to subtract one from the seconds. Then we have to go down below and then put seconds in parentheses and equal to one. So this is saying if seconds is equal to one, and then we have the first part's going to be false, and then second part's going to be true. So for our false statement, you're going to say document dot get element by ID is going to, and then we have to reference plural because this is referencing um, this plural function up here. Sorry, um, up here, plural. And then we're going to say that the text content of that is going to be blank. So, and actually don't put a semicolon here, so that's blank. Then for the true statement, so if it's seconds is uh, not equal to one. Actually, sorry, I make, mix these up. So the first one is saying if seconds is equal to one, you don't want to put the S there because it's not plural. But the second part is saying that if it's not equal to one, so it's false, then you have to tell it um, document dot get element by ID. And this is going to be plural again. And dot text content and that's going to equal s. So this is just adding an s when the seconds are plural. And then you need one more thing. So document dot get element by ID. And this is countdown. That's uh, text content. Every time that this ticks is going to be equal to seconds. And then one more thing. So if seconds is less than or equal to zero. Whoops, zero. Um, we want to clear interval. And then reference what we want to clear, which is countdown. So what clear interval is doing is uh, it's saying that when seconds is zero, you want to stop the timer. And that's what clear interval does. So let's go ahead and just this function is done. Let's just get rid of that space. Then we just need our end timer here. And for this, it's going to be pretty simple. So when the, we want to end the timer abruptly, um, clear interval, it's going to be called. Then we want to say that we want to clear countdown. And then we want to reset the seconds to our initial value, which here is 60. But like I said, it could be whatever you want. Then we have to update the, um, the countdown clock. So let's reference countdown and say dot inner HTML equals 60. Okay, and one thing that I want to say, um, this this functionality right here, this start timer, um, I actually got this from another web page, and I will reference the links down below giving that person credit. Um, sometimes you need a little bit of help on, on how to do certain things. I've never done a web app timer before, but I went ahead, you know, you got to give credit where credit's due. Um, obviously, the buttons aren't mine either. However, I did do the rest of this. Um, and, you know, sometimes as, as programmers, we just kind of take, you know, other people's ideas, not as our own, but, you know, we share ideas. And, and I think that's an important trait um, to give credit where credit's due. But I should also, you know, mention that and say that, you know, a lot of this is my work, though. So 
you know, sometimes we struggle a tiny bit and we just need a little bit of help. But luckily for you guys, um, I've already done all the research necessary and put this together in a nice web app form, nice video, so you guys can hopefully learn something. All right, guys, and after that, we are pretty much done. So let's go ahead and save this and the other one. And give this a reload. Okay, so let's go ahead and test it. So let's click Start. You know, notice it starts fine. And click Plus and Minus, and so we can add it as it goes. And let's try End. And awesome. Um, end appears to work as well. So you can also add time before or minus time before you start it, and then click Start. And it works seamlessly. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or comment down below any suggestions I should do for another video. Um, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.